The Contax N series film cameras debuted in 2000 with the Contax M1, a pro-level 35mm film camera featuring autofocus using a new line of Contax lenses, the N series lenses. It was followed by the consumer level Contax NX. Both cameras supported five focus selection points, a new addition for Contax cameras, as previous autofocus contaxes only supported a single focus selection point in the centre. On the Contax M1, there is a main on-off switch which also acts as the exposure lock enable. There are several dials on the top and front of the camera. On the front of the camera there is a command dial at the top of the hand grip. This has multiple uses and its operation is configurable. There are two of the dials on the top of the camera, the shutter speed selection dial and the exposure compensation dial. There are camera mode and exposure bracketing selectors wrapped around the dials on the top. Some of the dials and switches have lock buttons that you need to press to change the settings. On the back of the camera is a combined button and switch that is used to select the focus mode of the camera and to focus the camera. Also on the back is the focus point selector control, which is a combined dial and puff hat. Setting the camera mode is done with the lever at the bottom of the shutter speed dial. The modes determine what you are going to set on the camera and what the camera will set for you in terms of exposure related settings. And also are used for configuration of some settings on the camera. In AV mode, you set the aperture and the camera sets the shutter speed. In TV mode, you set the shutter speed and the camera sets the aperture. In P mode, the camera sets both the aperture and the shutter speed. And in M mode, you set both the aperture and the shutter speed. In X mode, the camera sets flash sync speed of 125th of a second. In B mode, the camera sets nothing. And the shutter is kept open as long as the shutter release or cable release is depressed. ISO mode is used to manually set the film speed and CF mode is used to set the camera's custom functions. The film speed is set automatically for DX coded films. For non-DX coded films it has to be set manually by setting the camera mode to ISO and using the command dial to select the required ISO. Moving out of ISO mode accepts the current selection. There are three metering modes Spot, Centre Weighted and Matrix. These are selected via a lever on the left hand side of the camera body just behind the lens mount. The spot meeting area is fixed to use the area of the centre point focusing frame in the viewfinder. The camera supports single shot focusing, continuous focusing and manual focus. These are selected using the focus dial on the back of the camera. In manual focus mode, the camera is focused by manually turning the lens focusing ring or by using the focus button on the back to perform a single shot autofocus. The camera then remains focused on that point. This can be very handy if you wish to focus at a point and take multiple shots focused at that point or wish to take a shot focused at a certain point after delaying time as it saves having to hold down a button to maintain focus lock. In automatic focusing, the camera focuses when the shutter release is pushed down halfway. In addition, on the focus selection dial, there is a fourth position indicated by two arrows. This enables focus bracketing when three frames are taken in sequence at slightly different focus distances. Focus point selection is performed with the focus point select control on the back. This has two modes. In manual mode, you simply push the little central button on the manual focus select lever to manually select any one of the selection points. Point it to one of the four corners to select one of the four corner points or straight in to select the central focus point. There is also an automatic focus selection point mode. This enables you to select which focus points are used for automatic selection. This can be all five, or the bottom two, the top two, the left two, or the right two. This is achieved by pushing the focus auto select lever down to scroll through the available point selections. If you select one of the two point modes, the focus point is selected which focuses at the closest distance of the two. The selected focus point options are displayed on the LCD screen on top of the camera. For automatic mode, the appropriate number of squares is shown in the appropriate position, and in manual mode, a single cross is shown in the appropriate position. The focus selection can be locked by rotating the focus auto select lever to the lock position. The camera's motor drive mode can be set to single frame or continuous advance or self-timer modes. This is done by holding down the drive button on top of the camera 
and moving the command down to select the mode. Releasing the drive button accepts the current selection. In addition to its use in configuration modes, drive mode, ISO and CF mode, the command dial can be used for a number of activities depending on how the camera is set up. The green bar settings on the shutter speed dial and exposure compensation dial disable these dials and the command dial is used for the appropriate activity instead. What the command dial does, if anything, depends on the mode the camera is in. It can be used to set the shutter speed in TV mode or setting the exposure compensation in other modes or it can do nothing. The viewfinder of the M1 supplies all the usual information, such as the frame counter, metering mode, focus status indication, aperture and shutter speed in use, a flash ready indication, and a variety of other bits of information that tend to vary depending on the camera configuration. See the manual for details. The camera has a self timer function with two modes a 10 second delay mode and a 2 second delay mode. This is enabled by changing the drive mode to one of the self timer modes. In order to use the mirror lock on the camera, the two second delay mode must be used. It activates the mirror lock of the camera automatically. The camera supports custom functions that can be used to customize the behavior of the camera. See manual for details. Extras include a data back with an interval timer, an LCD viewfinder, a power pack, cable releases of the contacts LA type, interchangeable screens of the FX type, and a NAM1 adapter for mounting contact 645 lenses on the N series cameras. This is the 80mm f2 of the contact 645. With non-contact flashes, you set X mode or M mode with a shutter speed of 125th of a second or less and use the flash hand camera as per the flash's instructions for metering setting and, ind and indicated aperture on the camera. With a contact flash, in most modes, the flash sync speed is automatically set for you up to a maximum of 1 250th of a second when the flash is powered on. You also have the capability to use TTL mode with a contact flash. In TTL mode, the exposure is measured directly by the camera. In TTL mode, second curtain synchronization is supported with compatible flashes. TTL mode flash indicates whether the flash exposure was correct using the flash ready indicator in the viewfinder after exposure. It will blink for two seconds if the exposure was correct. For more details on TTL flash operation, consult the manual. When used with the Contax TLA360 flash, the M1 is capable of using all of its features including flash head zoom and on flash exposure compensation. A second flash sync port is supplied for connection of a flash not via the hot shoe. The second and final addition to the Contax N range of film cameras was the Contax NX. This was a consumer level camera that used the same lenses as the M1. It had a lower specification and lacked some of the more advanced features of the M1. It incorporated a built-in flash, the only Contax SLR to do so. The maximum shutter speed is reduced to 1 4,000th of a second from the 1 8,000th of a second of the M1. The Contax NX has a main on off switch which also acts as the exposure lock enable. It has two main dials, one on the front of the camera and another on the back. These are referred to as the F for front dial and R for rear dial. Also on the back of the camera is a button used to focus the camera at the right hand edge. To the left of the rear dial is the focus point selector control, which is a POV hat. It also has a position dial on the left hand side of the top of the camera. 
The position dial is used to enter setup mode for the camera and specify the film speed manually and set the custom functions. There is a white circle setting which stores the last used configuration of the camera and if the camera is powered up in this mode it loads the last used settings. The green set mode enters setup mode to allow you to configure the settings that will be loaded in green circle mode. As far as I can tell this enables you to specify a basic operation mode using the green set button, load it using the green circle mode when the camera is powered on and then use the mode button to change some values and use the white circle mode to save the changes for future use as the last configured setup. If you need to revert back to the basic operation mode, it can be reloaded by powering the camera on in green circle mode. Setting the camera mode is done using the mode button, which is pressed and then the value to be set can be selected using the rear dial. And the option to use can be selected using the front dial. Pressing the mode button again applies the current choice. The mode button enables you to change exposure mode, drive mode, metering mode, and focus mode. The exposure modes AV, TV, P and M can be selected this way. B mode is an option in M mode. These modes behave as they do on the M1. The ISO and CF modes are set in the position down on the left on the camera on the NX. The film speed is set automatically for DX coded films. For non-DX coded films it has to be set manually by setting the camera mode to ISO using the position dial and using the rear dial to select the required ISO. Moving out of ISO mode accepts the current selection. There are three metering modes, spot, centre weighted and matrix. These are selected via the mode button. The spot metering area is fixed to use the area of the centre point focusing frame of the viewfinder. The spot metering area is not as small as the spot metering area on the M1. The camera supports single shot focusing, continuous focusing and manual focus. These are selected using the mode button. The focusing modes operate as they do on the M1. There is no focus bucketing on the NX. Focus point selection is performed with the focus point selector control on the back. The focus selector only operates in manual selection mode as per the M1. On the LCD screen a single cross is shown in the appropriate position. The camera's motor drive mode can be set to single frame or continuous advance or self timer mode. This is done by using the mode button. There is no mirror lock on the NX. In addition to its use in configuration modes with the mode button, the rear dial can be used for a number of activities. What the rear dial does, if anything, depends on the mode the camera is in. It can be used to set the shutter speed in TV and M modes. In addition to use of the mode button, the front dial is used to set the exposure compensation. Holding the ABC button down with the flash down enters ABC exposure compensation setting mode and the front dial can be used to specify the ABC bracketing value used. If the flash is up when this button is pressed, flash exposure compensation is specified using the front dial instead. The viewfinder of the NX operates in much the same way as that of the M1. The camera has a self timer function with a 10 second delay mode. The camera supports custom functions that can be used to customise the behaviour of the camera. See the manual for details. Extras include a data back and cable release of the Contax LA type.
The NAM1 adapter can also be used for mounting contact 645 lenses on the NX. The Contax NX has a built-in flash that illuminates up to the angle of view of a 28mm lens. It can support red eye reduction and second curtain sync. In addition to this, other flashes can be used as per the M1. And TTL flash is available with Contax flashes. Extra functionality is available with the TLA360 flash as per the M1. There are a range of zooms and three prime lenses in the end lens range. Lenses fall into two groups. Lenses for the M1 that supported autofocus, manual focus, dual focusing, where you could simply turn the focusing ring when in AF mode to switch to MF mode. And the lenses for the NX that had a separate switch to switch between manual focus and autofocus modes. Both type of lenses work on either body. There are two NX lenses, the 28 to 80mm f3.5 Vario Sonar, which is small and lightweight, and the 70 to 200 mm f3.5 Vario Sonar, which is of moderate weight and size. The rest of the lenses were designed for the M1. There's a 17 to 35 mm f2.8 Vario Sonar, which I don't know anything about. It's not one I own. Uh, it's not particularly cheap. There's also a 24 to 85 mm f3.5 Vario Sonar, which is heavy but very good and a 70 to 300 mm f4 Vario Sonar, which is another heavy lens. There's also a 50 mm f1.4 planar. This lens has focusing issues with the M1. It appears to be better with the NX. It is expensive, typically over 700 pounds or 950 US dollars before input duties at current prices. There is also a 100 mm f2.8 macro sonar, which is heavy but very good. There is a third prime lens that was made, um, this is the 85mm f1.4 planar. This lens is so expensive that it nearly makes the price of the 50mm f1.4 look reasonable. Oddly enough, when Contax introduced the AX, which autofocused the Yashica Contax range of manual focus lenses, one of the reasons it gave for not going to autofocus lenses was that, definitely, the planar T-Star 85mm f1.4 could not be modified and still maintain its incredible performance and yet one duly appeared for the M range, which also focuses. I like the Contax N series. The M1 is one of my favourite 35mm film cameras. The build quality is excellent, the 5-point autofocus is a big improvement on single focus point, and despite its complexity, it's quite simple to use. It has a lot of features that I mostly don't use other than occasionally, but they don't get in the way. The metering I find to be accurate and the three different modes are all you need. The camera's control use dials like most Contaxes, which I like. I have found that I see nothing lacking in the shots it produces and it works the vast majority of the time for me. The NX is a slightly odd camera in the way that it works and I find it a bit awkward but it does work and it makes using the 50mm f1.4 easier. The cameras do suffer a bit from Contax's quirky engineering innovations such as the dual focus point selection on the M1 and the base configuration on the NX doesn't seem to be of much use to me. These do not seem to have been widely adopted elsewhere. The main problem with the range is the limited range of lenses. The zooms are well covered and not too expensive, but there are a few primes and some of them are very pricey. A feature I suspect of the system being canned before it would have been complete. Thank you for watching this video and I hope it shed a bit of light on a dead camera system.